Hey everyone. So if you've been following along with the show, you know that recently I've been reading this amazing book called The Joys of Compounding by God and Bade. And I've been breaking down all the incredible lessons in this book on the We Study Billionaires podcast. On today's video, I wanted to expand on one of the chapters in the book that discusses financial independence and why Godin believes it's so important we understand it and strive for it. With that, let's get right to it. To make sure we're on the same page, financial independence essentially means that you have enough money saved up to never have to work again in your life. Financial independence and financial freedom essentially means that you get to live life on your own terms. Usually for someone that is financially independent, their money isn't going to be stored away in cash. It's likely going to be in things like stocks, bonds, real estate, or a business. Something that generates income and it tends to hold its value over time. Gautam explains that financial independence is critical and it completely changes everything because it allows you to not have to depend on anyone else, whether that be a boss, clients, a schedule, or even a paycheck. A lot of people believe that money is scarce and that it's very hard to get, but money is actually very abundant. What's scarce is our time. We can always get more money, but it's time that once it's spent, we'll never be able to get any of it back. This is why financial independence is so valuable. It gives us control of our time and it allows us to spend our time in a way that we find the most value in. For a lot of people, this means more time spent with your spouse or your kids, more time to do things you enjoy, or maybe even have the ability to do the kind of work that you truly enjoy rather than working a job just for the money. In The Joys of Compounding, Gautam Bay tells a story of how Charlie Munger achieves financial independence. Charlie Munger is an avid reader, and he read this book called The Richest Man in Babylon, and he understood that it's critical to spend less than you make and invest the difference. For most people, the best place to invest a lot of their money and savings is into the stock market. So spending less than you make is absolutely critical to building wealth and achieving financial independence. If someone makes $500,000 per year, but they're spending $500,000, they might look really wealthy with all the fancy things they can buy, but... They really aren't building any wealth if they aren't buying assets that produce that cash and assets that tend to increase in value over time. Peter Lynch has stated that in the long run, it's not just how much money you make that will determine your future prosperity. It's how much of that money you put to work by saving and investing it. Most people think of money as this awesome tool that lets you buy nice things, but those who have achieved financial independence realize that money can actually be used to achieve a level of freedom that most people just don't have. Always remember that money can be used to buy back your time. And once you buy back your time, you never have to rely on anyone else again. Turning back to Charlie Munger, he wasn't born into exceptional wealth, and early on in his life, he served in the U.S. Army Air Corps, and he did some military service before he ended up going to law school. Like most people early on in their careers, Munger needed to trade his time for money initially by working a job. This is the path that most people take, and it allows them to start building up that nest egg of savings, but also start learning valuable skills to eventually take on other pursuits. Munger had a really successful career in law, and then he went on to do real estate development on the side. Once he was doing well with the real estate development, he had 10 times his annual expenses and savings, and then he eventually made the jump to work for himself. Then he met Warren Buffett and realized just how well Warren was doing with his investment partnerships, so Warren eventually talked him into becoming what Gotham calls a full-time capitalist. By the time Munger wound down his real estate business, he had three to $4 million in assets and he was financially independent. He could live life on his own terms and he could really do whatever he wanted because he no longer depended on needing an income to get by. So to use Munger as a template for our own way to build wealth, Gautam lays out four key takeaways from Munger to achieving financial independence. First is work hard, get an education and develop valuable skills. Munger didn't start the next hot tech company or day trade his way to wealth. He went into a really good field and he put in the work and he was a learning machine. Second, use your career to save 10 times your annual expenses. For example, if you spend $50,000 a year, that's $500,000 you'll need in savings. If you don't have a family, then you probably won't need 10 times your annual expenses, but this is just a general rule of thumb. Did you know we have an awesome free investing newsletter in addition to this podcast? 
We have over 30,000 people reading the newsletter daily. So some of you are subscribed, but that's a lot fewer than the 100 million podcast downloads we've done since inception. If you're one of the 99 million people who have listened to our podcast, but haven't yet subscribed to our newsletter, join for free today by simply clicking the link here on the pop-up on your screen and then entering your email. In just five minutes a day, you can stay up to date with what's going on with your money and in the financial world. Join over 30,000 other readers now by simply clicking the link here in the pop-up on your screen and then entering your email. Third and a somewhat optional step is to accelerate wealth accumulation, you can take some risk and start a business. If you look at any person who built wealth quickly, almost all of them did so through the ownership of a business. Starting a business is obviously very difficult, but those who are ambitious, work hard, and develop the skill sets needed they are in the best position to start a business and identify those opportunities to do so that fits their own skill sets. And then the fourth and final step, at some point your investments will earn enough passive income to support your living expenses. One general rule of thumb is to have 25 times your annual expenses in something like a stock bond portfolio. This is also known as the 4% rule. Having at least this amount should put you in a position to have enough money stashed away to be financially independent, but ideally the assets you own would create dividend income or cash flow to cover all of your expenses so you don't have to draw down on the principal amount that you have saved up. One of the most important pieces to achieving financial independence is to avoid what's called the hedonic treadmill. In our consumption-driven world, most people fall into the trap of the hedonic treadmill which means that as someone's income rises, their expenses tend to naturally increase as well. So if someone's income goes from 60,000 to 70,000, then their expenses tend to naturally increase by $10,000 as well because they have more money to spend than they did before. To fast track your path to independence, you'll wanna keep your expenses at a similar level while increasing your income, especially when you're younger, because compound interest is its strongest when you put your money to work early on in your investing journey. And once you increase your expenses, you're essentially creating a new baseline that lasts for much of your life. I recently read a statistic that said that the average 401k balance for retirees is only $35,000, which as we all know, is far too low to retire on. And this is the result of the hedonic treadmill and people continuing to increase how much they spend as their incomes increase as well. This hamster wheel leads people to having to work their entire lives and they really never achieve that goal that we want, which is financial independence. The somewhat sad part about the hedonic treadmill is that spending more money probably won't actually improve our lives or make us any happier. We see someone else that has a nice $80,000 Tesla and we think how cool it would be for us to have one as well. And then once we get that car we always wanted, it becomes totally normalized in our life, even after just a few months. And our mind wants to get the next hot item that catches our attention after that. It becomes a never ending hamster wheel that a lot of people never get out of. So that's the hedonic treadmill that you may have heard in other videos. Dave Ramsey has this quote that is so true related to this idea of the hedonic treadmill. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't know. Now, I'm not one to say that we shouldn't buy nice things from time to time. I enjoy spending a little bit more money on a nice meal with friends every once in a while or go take an extra vacation. I'd encourage people to just be mindful of how much you're spending relative to how much you're making and spend the time to think about how much you value the things you're spending money on. If you're spending 20% of your income on a car, for example, but you spend a very small portion of your day in your car, maybe think about if that is really appropriate for you as we wanna spend our money on what is truly important to us and things that we truly value in our lives. Morgan Housel, who's the author of The Psychology of Money, recommends that we should seek contentment with the things that we already have. It doesn't mean that we stop saving. It means that we come to terms with the idea that more things in our life aren't going to bring us that much happiness. If financial independence is important to you, then you should be saving a certain portion of your income and developing skills to help you reach that goal. To round out this episode, I wanted to share this quote from Charlie Munger. Spend each day trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Step by step, you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts, but you build discipline by preparing for fast spurting. Slug it out one inch at a time, day by day. At the end of the day, if you live long enough, most people get what they deserve. 
If you enjoyed this episode, I bet you'll also enjoy the podcast episode we just put out covering this subject, among others. It is episode 536 on the We Study Billionaires podcast. You can click the link in the description or the link here that'll pop up on the screen to check it out. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it and found some value in it. Before you go, if you could hit the like and subscribe button below, we would really appreciate that as well. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing and what content you'd like to see in the future. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next time. It is why Munger has said, it takes character to sit there with all that cash and do nothing. I didn't get to where I am today by going after mediocre opportunities.